How's it going all? Darby here with JDI University, and this video is going to be an interview shared that we re recorded recently with a member of our community who is a AI consultant named Marty Bradley, who works with different companies on integrating AI into their business. And uh, Marty's been a member of our community since really the very early days, back when we were called the AI author, and we actually worked together to help Marty with writing uh, a book several years ago. And Marty has since been building his business using AI and helping integrate with other businesses and uh, reached out recently to see if I'd be open to just chatting a bit about how we're building tools and using AI to create products around services to handle a lot of the heavy lifting and the stuff that goes on to delivering the, the deliverable, so to speak. Hey, how's it going, y'all? Darby here with JDI University, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing an interview that I did with a gentleman by the name of Marty Bradley, who is an AI consultant. He's a member of the JDI University community and has been for several years now. He was actually back part of one of our very early first co cohorts of writing books with AI and did indeed write his book and complete finishing his. Hey, how's it going, y'all? Darby here with JNAI University. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing an interview that I did recently with a member of our community by the name of Marty Bradley. He is an AI consultant and he helps businesses integrate AI systems into uh, their workflows. And Marty has been a member of our community for several years now. He was actually one of the first members of our community that went through our initial book challenges and also more extensive hands-on workshops to work with myself and our team on helping him get the book out of his head and onto paper. And has since, that was three years ago now, has since really leaned into the AI consulting front and is doing a lot of cool things on his front and reached out to me to see if I'd be open to sharing with him and his audience a bit more about how we're using AI natural language and prompts and so to speak to create productized services and how we're doing this one for market sauce but also some other insights as to the new tools that we have been leaning into at jenny university that are helping take our ideas and turning them into action and impact and so excited to dive into a number of things throughout this episode i just want to share with you prior to, to us jumping in that if you like this video and you think that this type of interview is useful, you find it helpful for yourself, let me know in the comments and feel free to share this with another entrepreneur or a leader in business that is looking to leverage AI for their own workflows, for their own teams, for their own initiatives, and subscribe to us on YouTube so that you get notified when we get more of these types of videos. But all that said, here is a video with myself and member of the Gen AI University community, Marty Bradley, on leveraging AI and natural language to create products. Enjoy. Hey, Darby, it's nice to see you again. Hey, for everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, just a quick intro. My name is Marty Bradley. I'm a Gen AI trainer and I'm actually more of an engineer than a strategist lately. And um, so we're going to be talking with Darby. And so, Darby, why don't you do a quick intro, and then I want to let everybody know how we actually met. And I think it was a long time ago. It was like three or four years ago. But So why don't you do a quick intro, and then I'll lead everybody back in. Sure, yeah. Thanks for having me here, Marty. Um, yeah, my name is Darby Rollins. I am the, the founder of Gen AI University, um, which is a, a platform we started up about three, three and a half years ago to help people with AI education and implementation training. Um, back then, we got started with Jasper. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover some of those early days here on today's call. But yeah, we've kind of grown a community over the past few years and are out exploring ways to build and create products and um, different services and collaborate with others with all these new AI innovations. So it's an exciting time to be in entrepreneurship and in business, but also a lot of um, a lot of change happening, a lot of uncertainty. Um, certainly, is a lot to navigate, and I'm glad to have a community of folks like yourself, Marty, to to be along for the ride with. It's pretty interesting the way we met. It was uh, mm -hmm. a bunch of years ago, and I don't even remember how I got it. It was something maybe through LinkedIn, and it was about a cohort of people writing a business book, right? And I think the title was Write a Business Book in 10 Days. And, and you know, when I got... The, oh, was it seven days? Yeah, yeah, write a book in a week. 
Well, maybe it, it took me 10 days. It took me a little <laughs> bit longer than everybody else. I'm, I'm slow yeah. on the uptake. But, but it was interesting because we got in there and um, you were doing something that I hadn't seen before, uh, writing recipes in the back end of Jasper, which you know, back then I think you called it auto scripting. But I think, I don't know if Jasper calls it recipes or not. But uh, as we started going through this, it, I, I was also, I was doing consulting at the time. And I started thinking, wow, I can write these things. Don't have to be for a book. I can help people generate other type of things. And so I started using it in my agile consulting practice, helping people write epics and stories and things like that. And then as OpenAI and ChatGPT came out, I just went full bore. But uh, all of that was uh, thanks to you and, and writing a book. I actually did get my uh, book written and published on Amazon. Uh, but the part that that's really stuck with me, kind of the prompt engineering and getting into the Gen AI space. So why don't you tell us some uh, what you've been up to? You know, you can go into the university, the Gen AI university if you want, but um, I also want to hear about your product, Market Sauce, and not just the product, but for people listening, you know, what Darby has been able to do is basically build this product as, I don't, I don't want to call it as a no-code solution, but basically build this product on his own. Uh, he has a lot of industry experience, but I don't think you have a, de a software development background. So if you want to get into that, you know, we can talk about that and yeah, um, I'll yeah. just jump in with questions. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I'd ever like really classify myself as a software engineer or developer by like how I would see myself, but certainly when AI came out, I, I got a lot of excitement and had a lot of fun figuring out how to use like the natural language side of things to you know, speak prompts, write prompts, and use it to get these tools that in some cases can be super, like, hard to understand, like, how do I even use this in the first place? Like, ChatGPT is great, but it can do a billion things. And if you don't know how to direct it and, and keep it going down a path towards an outcome, it can a lot of times just give you lackluster outputs. And, and so that was a lot of the problems we saw people running into just early on with with Jasper was how do I use this tool? And a book was a great example of an application, but a book is just a piece of content and that piece of content can be anything else, right? Podcast scripts, blog posts, LinkedIn articles, and the things that we all need to be doing and creating in our business in a lot of cases is just time consuming and costs a lot of resources. Traditionally, you know, not even much longer before, just a few years ago, cost a, a lot more to produce just one blog post than it would cost now to produce and write a, a blog post with AI once you have the right workflow. And so it's obviously shaken up a lot of how people are doing business, how they're building and structuring their teams. And while I would to be able to say I'm smart enough to be able to do this all on my own, I certainly am not. <laughs> and and one of the things that's been key to making market sauce, even to the point where it is today, which we still have a, a lot more to go, it's still very much an MVP in my eyes, has been work with one of our, our core developing partners, which is, his name is Chris. He's a, our chief AI I officer, I guess you would call it. And, and so he's been instrumental in helping kind of like fine tuning and getting the automations like really to the point where it can run and do so at a level of scale that would just be human impossible even if you can get the right the same type of outputs inside of a chat gpt or claude or another one of these large language models um, there's just a lot of process that goes through running the prompts making sure that they're going in the right direction and ensuring that they're following the right sequence to get the desired outcome which as we say I mean, you've probably heard me say it anyways the ai is going to ai it just goes off the rails and, and off track sometimes and that's where you have to be the human in the guiding the process and which is where i think you've seen especially on the developer front but while ai is going to be able to code and create things you still need to know at least some level of expertise and subject matter you know experience to to know if it's going the right direction or if you need to guide it or enhance it or optimize it or refocus it um, so having those partners has been really great for getting like the full scale. I mean, there's, there's certainly levels of code in there that, you know, it's not purely like no code, I think, because he's getting some of those automations going. But on the flip side, we did create this as a product based on frameworks that we've learned and like built and collaborated with other experts on for the last three years and doing a lot of that by simply structuring prompts, refining prompts 
prompts and doing a lot of that process manually, which the only code in this case would be talking to chat GPT and using your language as the code. You know, we got to the point where we could produce these 50 page in super detailed market analysis reports, um, just doing that process. But you get to a point where even if you're doing it with five chat GPT accounts at the same time, you're still like going to run into limits and there's still a lot inside of that ultimate outcome um, for creating a marketing strategies with this process. You know, you need to have some type of automations that could scale that. And so that's where over the past year, we've been digging into a platform called Make very extensively for running a lot of the backend processing of, of these automations to helping with just ensuring the quality is there, but if something breaks or goes off track, like we're creating AI assistants on the fly that are quality controlling and making sure that using open AI's, you know, assistance platform that um, you've got a capability to just tell it what you want and it'll go and create that thing for you, get the job done and then keep the automation moving. Well, that's the much more extensive piece that, that certainly takes um, more time to get comfortable and confident with how to build out the technical that technical front, there's also some really great tools out there now that we're finding more and more use out of that are removing it, removing a lot of the friction of needing to be able to plug in and create those level of extensive automations. If you just want a simple tool and one I'm exp exploring with right now is called pickaxe that basically lets you create and productize AI tools that you can use and they plug into open AI and Tropic minstrel. I believe I haven't explored played around with that model yet um, in, a, in a very simple interface be able to create your own the same way you create gpts um, inside of a chat gpt account which i could probably talk more about that too but similar style you upload your own knowledge you upload your own instructions how do you want it to act how do you want it to respond give a series of prompts and you know really effective for something that not quite i mean what i'm seeing right now is like it's nowhere near as overwhelming to get started with it there's still a level of understanding to get these smaller apps built for sure but for someone that's a consultant that had a simple proven process that they have clients maybe after they onboard fill out these questions i'm going to create you a strategy document or an inside analysis or something that you do as a consultant it's like a process or a framework these types of tools, whether you want to go a no-code way very simply with something like Make and talk with the AI tools, um, you could, of course, add code into there. Um, a lot of ways to find some quick win opportunities. And then even if it takes you 15 minutes at a time to do it, if you can reduce that down to 15 seconds, right? And you're doing it, then you can you know, reallocate that time as you're used to, to other projects and opens up a lot of possibilities, I think. Yeah. And what I'm seeing is last year, Year to the last couple of years, it was like, and I don't want to discount it, but almost like a toy in these large organizations. It was fun to play with, but nobody was putting it seriously into the middle of their customer workflow. And I think as we move into 2025, that's starting to happen where people need real apps that can handle load and they have to budget for them. And the second you have to the budget for them, you got to prove an ROI. And everybody kind of worried about. So we're at this kind of chasm and this threshold that I think is going to be pretty exciting next year. That's why I want to get you on to talk a little bit more about about this. And you know, as, as you go through it, if you can continue to talk about some of the things that are under the hood. I don't want you to give away your whole architecture, but, but uh, the more you can talk about that, I think these are the kind of things that people are struggling with. And the other thing that I've seen that's a benefit is as subject matter experts learn this technology, maybe they don't build a production system with it, but if they use it in their day-to-day, -day, when they go to describe what they need built, they have a better understanding. They can help lead their uh, development staff into uh, building a more robust solution, right? Without everybody kind of guessing, things like that. I'll stop interrupting. You go ahead. No, you're not interrupting at all, man. No. Like with a lot of these tools, I mean, as the landscape changes, I mean, being able to just speak where this is going to fit and add value and make sense is even more important because there's just a lot of obscurity and a lot of the tools that are you know maybe not really backed by the team the right infrastructure to handle like larger scale clients which i think you've probably seen you now that we've yeah. just we're, we're a small team for sure and we realize that there is a lot that needs to be done in terms of 
handling data and privacy and like those types of things when you're building like any sort of app that it was true before AI, but now with AI, you just need to make extra sure, especially if you're uploading private sensitive information that I, like you saw whenever chat GPT would come out and people were uploading a document and in an instance said, like, how did this other company learn about what my company's putting in or I put in sensitive information and like it got that in some other workspace, a lot of those issues initially that chat GPT ran and like it was a big spotlight on them, you know, like it seems like they addressed pretty early on pretty quickly with, okay, I do not share your data on me if I'm using an enterprise account or you're, um, I'm an agency, you know, like you're not, you know, storing certain sensitive information, you can delete it, you can make sure it's not training their models. You know, that's anybody that's looking at building this out inside of their own organization needs to be just, I think, just aware of where that conversation is right now and just understanding like that whatever tool you do end up using, are they even talking about that sort of thing in terms of yeah. what's happening with your data when you're using it? Assuming the data is out of the way, know that it's going to be safe and secure with whatever platform you're using. I just that's a good thing to note regardless of what situation you're in, solo newer or or large enterprise. Um, I think understanding like where's the time spent right now already is really important for identifying the areas that should probably make the most sense to be focused on. Obviously, in the nature of an entire workflow, it's helpful to know from start to finish, like what and at a large organization, like there's a lot of moving parts, there's different teams, there's different people managing certain projects. And frankly, like we don't work with a ton of like large scale enterprises. Most of our clients are consultants or smaller agency or some business owners that are using these tools with one or two team members. And so it's a little bit different of a way that we're identifying places for these tools, but I think a lot of how to approach building them can be applied and at least seeing where are the inefficiencies right now in your current process? What's manual what's costing you a lot of time? And, and which of those activities do we want to focus on that's going to re result in some added value based on the output and, and the time there? Where we're focused on is in adding that value and the leverage between the level of input that you need to put in to get the market research that you need to make you know, more informed decisions, understand your target market, and speak more directly to them you know, with more clarity, more confidence and, you know, traditionally market research well before AI putting together a marketing brief or a structured report would be a very time consuming process. You need to read reviews, you would need to conduct fo focus groups and do a, a lot of the things that will give you that level of understanding. And with market sauce, we've developed a system that helps with just really compressing that time and kind of giving you that quantum leap forward like okay here's information on my business and my service here's the output and so i think it's helpful like right now to show how would this process work like a really this is like how it works and i'd be happy to show a little bit behind the hood for, for like what even setting up something like this looks like at a very basic level because I think these types of tools are going to be more common. Um, but again, the tool is going to give you the ability to do something, is, but you still need to understand the workflow and the whole business model around it isn't, needs to be taken into consideration beyond just, oh, assuming the tool is just going to solve all of your problems. Which obviously, it yeah, will. But yeah, um, would love to see it. Yeah. If you don't mind if I can uh, share my screen, I will. Sure. I can. There you go. So this is, again, still very much early on, and I'm something I'm building out right now for the platform where it's going to be available for marketers and consultants. So you're one of the first people seeing this, Marty. All right. Um, feel, feel honored. So this, uh, this is made on a platform called Pickaxe. We are building our own platform and software and backend um, as well on the side. This is just kind of like one of the ways that we're going to be able to start building out these workflows, plugging them in. We're also doing this for clients now. So it, you know, these are tools that are great to be able to white label and work with other consultants or other clients and their projects that you're doing. Um, but basically, in using this platform right now, the reason I'm working with this um, for what we're doing, it, it just gives me the interface that I need to do to interact with the prompts that I've already created with it. For, for this demonstration, I have two, basically two GPTs here that are designed to do specific tasks for me. The first one is the Mentalist 2.0. And this is aimed after our process for starting to get that quick snapshot of your market based on some content or information. So what 
I have done behind here is create a, a elaborate series of instructions and prompts that are going to give me an output that I want, but I need to use this in a specific scenario where I want to get an understanding of specific buyers in my market and how can my product or service or company um, and um, address them and meet them where they're at and speak their language and do all the things that I need to know from a marketing standpoint. I'm going to, I started working with Claude this morning to come up with a bunch of just random business names to start during mm -hmm. this demonstration. And one of them is it's called Myso Mend. It's, it's My. the first one that I saw here. So it's a, it's a mushroom based biodegradable packaging. And so it, okay, this is our product. It creates custom packaging solutions. It offers consulting services for companies transitioning to sustainable packaging. I didn't come up with this. It was just Claude giving me some ideas, right? If, if I'm the, the user here, I'm just make, I'm adding in my business information. You can add a lot more here. You can add files that are your customer interviews. You can add additional context for it to reference. And all of this is to give it the knowledge and the frame of reference for contextual understanding where then by clicking submit, I'm initiating the full report to be generated in this case. It's a lot of content right out the gate, but to the degree that you can produce this content is, is really limited by how extensive your process is going to be and what you do. Some of our reports end up being 50, 60 pages, but we're wow. using make.com for those. For this, and those are pretty overwhelming too. And so what we're working on with this is ways to create more simplified, focused outputs based on really specific, like more modular based frameworks that help you with going to create the, to even starting to create one of those big reports because if you don't know who your target audience is out the gate a lot of consultants that we work with their clients are too close to the product they're maybe disconnected from some of their customer base because their business has been growing they're they're focused on the things and so this is a, a nice refresh of like reposition this is who we are this is what we do differently and and so you can see i'm going to walk through now what was this output and how do we find this useful for, from a marketing research perspective I want to understand what is the product that we're going to be producing here, or what, what are we selling? Who's the audience that we're going to be targeting? And then what's an, a market analysis with these two reference points in mind? And so its initial intake here is talking about them being the ideal customer being eco-conscious brand or e-commerce companies. They're the businesses that are committed to sustainability. And without reading everything out here, right? As if I'm a marketing consultant, that sells services to brands that want to transition from like just say not eco-friendly plastics to sustainable environmental friendly packaging, right? I need the language and the messaging to speak to them with the language that they're at and understanding obviously a SWOT analysis of where some strengths, weaknesses, and threats in here, but going deeper on specifically who are our customers, who, what are their core values? What are their emotional drivers, their desired benefits? specific market segments, potential sub-segments, right? And so just getting this report done for me in a snapshot, I mean, and I'm not a consultant in this degree where I'm working with these type of brands, if that's my business and I want to conduct market research and create a campaign around it, this is useful for knowing that you're on the right track with how your messaging is going to come across. Are you speaking to the right pain points in your messaging? Are, the, are you understanding your customer's goals, um, your goals, if they're the primary goal of your clients is to really establish yourself as a leader in sustainability, right? You can help them accomplish this goal by doing what you do as a product or service, but you need to be able to speak to all of the different things that are going on in your, your customers and your clients mind to, you know, inform your marketing and message. But then once you get that feedback from the market, after you get this information, right? And you start to put content out, you can refine and create different iterations and evolve how your your persona is really because as your market is evolving, your messaging is going to want to continue to meet them where they're at. And so you can see, again, this is one example. I'm pretty comprehensive from what I would want to see right here out the gate. And of course, you can go deeper in a number of di these different things. But if you're not at the right point from the starting line, then this is designed to kind of align where's that focus going to be? Who are we speaking to? Where do we want to find them? 
and um, how are we you know, taking that message into account. All of this information from one input that I just copied and pasted from a claw generation, right? And so the more information that you're going to bring from your own perspective, your own business, your own customer information and insights is going to inform this messaging. And if you're working with multiple clients, it's as easy as generating multiple of these reports and then integrating that inside of your consultative process for, you know, helping your clients understand or however you're sending this information, you know, ways to, again, improve communication is where it all comes down to. The idea of the buyer's brief conversational thread is to take the mentalist outputs and then open up a conversational dialogue with the AI, continue to refine and respond back and forth and have more of those type of simulated conversations that you can bring different perspectives and insights and have your own focus group and so to speak that you can get messaging and get ads, ask it for that content. And so what we'll be doing is creating additional frameworks inside of our market sauce platform that will allow you to produce additional content, additional messaging, additional insights, uh, all related to market research. And we do all of this, this the initial backend inside of Pickaxe. This is, a, again, one example. There's, there's a few other good tools, but Pickaxe has been the one that I've just started using. And so you know, I, I don't, not, I'm not going to share like an affiliate link or anything with you guys here. This is just <laughs> like showing you guys that this is a powerful tool that you have at your disposal and incredibly cost effective too, in terms of like what it costs to even up and start using these. But the key with anything that you just saw there is all what's going on in the background of it. So I'm going to just the buyer's brief one, for example, this one's pretty straightforward. If I'm creating like that chat simulation from my buyer's brief, there's two things that I want to give it to inside of here. And then and in general, when you're working with AI, uh, you need to understand that your AI that you're with needs to understand first and foremost, what's the role that it's playing in here. In this case, I'm giving it the role in that chat kind of simulation of, hey, you're like a clone of me being the author. I've trained it on my book, and this is supposed to help people with executing the content of the book based on their buyer personas and who they're working with. This book, you can get on our website, I think if you go to buyersbriefbook.com, it'll take you there or it's on Amazon. But this book literally contains the recipe for how you, like what's going on behind this particular okay. GPT. I think that this is a really important point to, to stress here is that the whole point I wrote this book for at the end of the day was to be the source of the instruction manual for executing these elaborate sets of prompts. The first half of the book is an example of inputs and outputs. The second half of the book is the actual instructions for the prompts. And so how you get all the res results from our blueprints that we create, the full ginormous reports that are really only as effective as your ability to implement them, uh, because it can be a lot of information overwhelming to just the small snapshot five, five page or so reports that you just saw us generate all operate off of the similar notion that you need to understand these core questions. Then the better you understand how to answer these initial questions about your audience, your goals, what do they want, industries, the more you can focus that and organize that information at the gate, you open yourself up to being able to execute in this case, like all of these different instructions that are centering this particular to create, and I'm not gonna run through all of it, I'm not gonna run through the whole book. There's a lot of content here. But this is a byproduct of the auto scripting process that we started three years ago with every single one of these pumps has been detailed and crafted and created to build on top of the next one. And then what you saw was probably like half of what a full report would end up being if we just do the blueprint. But all of these inside of just this first section is going to give you an even more comprehensive in-depth understanding of that market specifically. And most businesses, like literally, like I know who my market is, this is who I serve, but there's three other seg segments of the market that could be right under their nose that their message or their market or the service could be completely missing. And so when it comes to creating and implementing this type of resource, it's to help not only 
kind of clear the blinders from that product marks Gatoma for being a bit too close to the product, which I think any entrepreneur can resonate with. And so like having a different perspective here, but then being able to take that perspective and go and put it into action and then get the real feedback from the humans on that side is really important. And so kind of having the AI in this part of the process is like, I'd view it like a co-creation partner. Mm -hmm. You might refine one of these blueprints 50 times before you find the perfect way that it says something. And it, it, it's, it's a word that you just want to like lean into or you're like, wow, okay. I never like would have thought about that. And maybe it was through other, a lot of information or maybe it's through different refinements. But, you know, again, all marketing is experimenting and then, you know, seeing what the data is telling us. And so again, I'm talking a lot about marketing because that's what our tool is focused on, but any company that is looking to integrate AI that's doing market benefit from knowing who their customers are or knowing who their employees are or wanting to recruit a certain type of employee or A-level player to join their business. So you get recruiters that use this for doing recruiting profiles of who they want to be working with. And so there's a number of applications for how you could apply just this specifically, just for your ideal target audience identification. This process would literally take a professional copywriter hours, if not days to weeks of time, um, depending on your level of building out a full in-depth report, like, like you would see from just the blueprint you know i think that time is i think a great way to save time i'll wrap up right here like it's a great way to save time on that front but also like just to validate that your ideas or that the language and the stuff that you've been hearing from your market is like this this is what other people are saying too and you know being able to get that validation and like really um, solidify your understanding of a market at a deeper level i, I think is just going to give you more of a competitive advantage these days than it is to not use this type of tool at your disposal and even if you don't use mine you can do this in a number of different ways with a number of different applications for ai um, hope that's helpful and sort of like what's the output look yeah. like what's the kind of behind the scenes look like and like the instruction key here and that's why the book is like the, the bread and butter for how you could use that to any number of instance if you have a framework that you've already created and proven. I, I think that's a, there are a couple of things that, that that you said that I want to hit on. One is you know I didn't think about uh, how to you know using something like this to go figure your target market of people of employed potential employees right. I think that's a great thing to do. And then just the for small medium sized business owners they know they need to market. They know they're supposed to know who their customer is. But a lot of them come from they did some consulting or did some training and they got a group of customers and they just assume that's the only person they can target. So having something like this, if you don't have a marketing background, being able to get you to that first draft and then making you answer the questions because you can tell. Let's say me, for example, right? I'm going to find consulting companies and I run your tool. If I look at the answers and they're vague or whatever, I know that it, it's me not being clear, right? Because it's like I'm trying to explain it to somebody. So then it makes me think about it a little bit more and then come back. Right? So now I'm learning a little bit more while I'm interacting with the AI. The other thing that you said that I think is really important is one of the problems I had back in the old days of software development was to do what you described. I would have had to take all that knowledge from your book find a way to put it into some relational database so that when somebody asks questions, it would figure out how to bring all that information back in, right? Now, maybe not that there are some additional things that, that we could do to make it easier. But what I think with AI, what it's opened up is that concept of, there are a lot of businesses that have a lot of unstructured data. They have a lot of information. They have that they could put together like a book or instructions and and then that can be the basis of what they're doing. So what they need to be able to do is how do they use Gen AI to leverage that information that they already have? And I like what you did with the book. I did something similar with my clients. Is I have activity guides in my book. Part of the reason was to explain to people how to do things. And I've done a similar kind of thing where I pull that in to help answer questions. So that, that's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I think. The organization of the knowledge that's already there, it, that's almost, it's probably the most important thing that any, but any 
consulting arrangement that I've been involved with anyways has been coming in be like, well, what do we have and where is it? And how do we gather all these resources and everything that is already there? It's kind of scattered, you know, on the one right. place. And then, yeah. okay, here, our source of truth for the content or the process that we're going to be implementing. Like that, like the AI is going to help a lot in that sort of case. But even just like knowing what pieces to pull in is so important just because the quality of the content is a lot more useful than just throwing everything that you have in every everywhere all into one chat bot. It's just, you're, it's going to muddle your response, right? And so not necessarily quantity, it's all about the quality and, you know, it takes time to put that data together, but then it's like, how much time are you saving once you are able to execute the process with everything there? And in a lot of cases, that's out, far outweighing the time that's spent putting into it. Um, but again, if you don't have a really clear, what's the ROI going to look like, how much time is this going to really save me and all that, then it's going to be hard going into it to know, right? And so like, whatever you can do to analyze and make sure that this, if we, this, and then we save this amount of time, this is going to free up whatever else resources is going to do all of these things. Get clear on that first, you know, give yourself an audit, so to speak of like how much time and ex are we actually doing through any of these processes? Versus if we can save this amount of time with AI, it's going to result in this amount of savings and potential revenue, but more than likely time savings is for sure. Uh, for most cases, not for sure. But yeah, yeah I, I mean, think, like, yeah. But, but that's what's going to be important going into next year is that, you know, it's no different than setting up projects today. When Back in the day when you would do AI ML, it, we always started with the data first to figure out what you had. And then you had to decide, do I need to create synthetic data, whatever. But so now it's still the same process, right? That type of process is, like you said, collecting up the data. What do we have? In most cases, you don't necessarily have to reformat it because it's in some format fairly similar. And then you bring it together. But talking through the ROI and what you're expecting from it, I think is important because you need to get everybody on the same page as to, why is this valuable? It's, maybe it's just an experiment that you want to be able to show that you can do something. That could be what the initial project is. But those are the kind of things that we need to be able to take uh, to our CFO and executive teams, if you're in a larger organization, to get approval for projects. I think those are great points to make because without that, you're just going to spin. But whenever I hear somebody say, yeah, I use ChatGPT, but it didn't really help me. How much time did you really spend with it? Did you really think through about what you were trying to do and what you expected as, as the outcome? So those are, those are great points. So. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm seeing from organizations that are, are putting AI initiatives together is kind of like letting one person or one small team be that, that those innovators leading the charge and spending the time looking for ways that we can develop these use cases and otherwise. It's, it's certainly not something that you can just have everyone on your team go and spend all their time doing go spend a lot of time going down a lot of rabbit holes in that, in that sense you know having at least one dedicated person who like is you know seeing the opportunities from within your organization presenting ideas and like giving them that capacity to innovate i think is going to lead to some cool things happening from organizations that are open to it on the other hand if you're not open to it and you're closing off ai initiatives because of one reason or the other you know, just consider that your competition is more than likely doing something on their front and the speed to implementing some of these, these can have some pretty big changes um, across the board. And so, um, yeah, I think even if it, there were for one reason or the other, these organizations, it's just a matter of like, you know, being open to where this technology can go. And I don't ever recommend people to do it for the sake of firing humans on your team or, or strictly for reducing some of that or I know there's cases where you're paying a certain amount for contractors or for certain types of work that obviously have gotten hit, such as like content writers. But then, you know, what are the opportunities that some of these roles that AI is shifting things up is like, well, now shifting from maybe you being just the content writer to being the person that understands how to create these systems with the AI so that you're overseeing your own team of AI content writers. And now you're more of the content editor that's reviewing these and kind of like looking at ways that you level up yourself within your organization to use these as tools that are going to enhance your own workflow. And I think that's going to be probably the fastest way to see where you're going to see benefits. Like what are you doing, whoever you are in your organization? Like what are you already doing that you could see could get innovated and save you time or make yeah, you more I, money? And that's probably a good place to start. 
and you know the thing is, is it's this isn't a tool problem it is a people problem mm -hmm. if you look at large organizations even if what everybody did was took one deliverable that that they so for example i do a lot of online courses so it used to take me like if I knew the content really well, it'd take me a couple of days to put a deck together because, you know, I'm trying to think about my audience. What does the deck look like? How should I organize it? I want to have some graphics so it distracts people uh, from me waving my hands in front of them. And then if I have to create other kind of things and just taking something like that and, and working through us um, with ChatGPT, I, I can generate a, a section in a course in about 15 minutes and then I do some edits. But the point is, is that it puts that first draft together. Mm -hmm. And then I can't just then send that to people there. You have to go in and think about, is a human going to be able to understand what these words mean? What do I have to say? What's the script behind the slides? And that's where you want to spend your time, right? As an instructor, you want to spend your time thinking about how can I make the experience better? How can I, you know, if it's an adult learner, how do I let them walk away with being able to do something, not just knowing something? And those are the kind of things you don't have time to think about if you're trying to jam together a bunch of slides and it's going to take you two weeks. And so if everybody took their time and found one deliverable in their job, figured out how to use, whether it's Claude, Copilot, whatever, and, and figured out how to automate that, a couple things would happen. One is they would teach themselves the technology. Second thing is they'd have to really dig into that deliverable to be able to explain and break it down for the AI. And then what that ends up doing is it ends up creating a way for them to hand that off to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So now instead of when you, cause you, we've all seen it in corporate America, you get promoted into a new job and you still have your old job. It follows you around forever, right? Cause you have to train people and it's never enough documentation. But if, if we thought about things that way, just like you're saying, make your job better, easier to do. It's not, it, it, they're, they're not going to get rid of you. Not yet. I don't know. I don't see the technology doing that now. It's you still need that expertise and that that human in the loop to be able to, like you said, do those final edits or decide if this is good quality or not. You know, what's the emotional take going to be on somebody when they read it and see it? Those things that the AI is not going to be able to do for you. And um, I think that's important. And uh, if people are afraid of losing their job, I think you're, the statement you made earlier, they should be more afraid of. AI of somebody else understanding it and then coming in above them. Um, I think the, the, the upskilling in general of using these tools versus those that aren't is going to cause a gap for sure. And if you mm -hmm. refuse to, if it's not a part of your vocabulary and you don't want to be willing to you know, level up your, your own skill set and using these tools, then if everything else looks the same, the person standing next to you is competent and confident in using all these different tools like, unless the company is just anti-ai which there, there certainly are those out there then i'm if i'm hiring i'm choosing the person that knows how to use these tools as opposed to the one that doesn't did you see i, I don't know if it was microsoft but somebody did that study and it says that now i don't know how big the study was but they said 70 percent of hiring managers would prefer to pick somebody with some ai skills that's a little less more experienced but knows how to use that in their job as opposed to somebody with more experience wow. so it, like it is affecting hiring so if, if you think that it's going to go away then you're just not paying attention to things so and also using that. ai to screen applicant like submissions yeah. and there's a lot of conversation around you how, how to even you know get through the noise yeah which, you know again there's some creative ways that you can use ai to stand out inside of the application process which i've, I've just seen some members of our community using in that front and you know, a lot of it's showing that you can add a lot of value in some ways, mm -hmm. like outside of the slew of other candidates that are coming in for the same position. If you're the one that can bring and harness this technology for innovation for a company, the company's open for it. You know, it could be the edge that you're looking for to, you know, to get put in the door at a new job. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Oh, man, just, you know, I think like the, Oh, how fast everything moves in this space. Um, you know, it's hard to tell where things are going to be in the next six, right? But you know, I think at the end of the day, just to, from, from our conversation today and anyone that's like looking at using these tools for creating products to do anything for yourself internally at your own business or to 
using to get more clients is just doing a really solid assessment of what are you doing right now in your own workflow and identify that core task that's taking your time and getting really clear what are the steps that go to make that outcome first. And then once you have all those steps laid out, figure out is there ways literally using AI to help you with com- understanding ways that you can like you can have conversations with chat GPT. This is my role. This is what I do. Be detailed. What are some ways that I can leverage AI inside of this workflow that can help me with saving time or doing something else, right? It literally can help you with coming up with ways to optimize your workflow. And then if documentation is part of your process, which it really shouldn't be any process, there's some really helpful tools out there that are AI driven that will document your process from monitoring your screen flow and then create SOPs based on that. So yeah. that, that was something that I would put off forever just because I don't want to sit down and type out everything <laughs> I do in X, Y, or Z. But I, I think right. called, one of them is coming to mind. It's called Guide, but I'm sure there's a number of other ones. But well, from, uh, the, from the role standpoint, we'll have, to, we'll have to do another one of these and I can... Uh, show you a couple of GPTs that I have that mm-hmm. does that basically takes a role and breaks it down into its um, a core part and the key deliverables. And then each of those deliverables help it break down the task to understand what can be automated, because I, I think that's absolutely true. That's what people should be be looking at. Well, if people want to get on you, how to, what's the easiest way, best way to find you? Yeah, you could uh, find me usually sending emails out on our Gen AI University newsletter on a weekly basis, sometimes more often, sometimes, sometimes not every week, but um, we got a lot of stuff cooking inside of our community, uh, Gen AI University, um, across all the social medias is where we post kind of our AI education and, you know, events and uh, different insights from inside of our community. Um, but I'm also online uh, on LinkedIn and other socials that Darby A. Rollins. Um, so you just look me up on LinkedIn or connect on Instagram, or I think I'm, I think that's my handle on everywhere. So pretty. <laughs> Don't try to be hard to find online. Yeah, like happy to connect if anyone wants to reach out, talk about AI and brainstorm ways that it can help, you know, make your, make whatever you're doing better or faster. Great, great. Yeah, and if you want to get a hold of me, LinkedIn is the best way, just in at Marty, or mid, just Marty Bradley. And so, hey, Darby, I really appreciate uh, talking to this. I love, I love how you've been looking at this for all these years. Right? Thanks for jumping on. I really appreciate it. Hey, you bet, Marty. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. There you have it, folks. Wrapped up that interview with Marty. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, or if you didn't, really, let me know in the comments and let me know any insights. There you have it, folks. Wrapped up the interview with Marty Bradley. If you found it insightful, you enjoyed it, entertained, or not so much, let me know in the comments. And of course, feel free to share this with friends and colleagues who you think would benefit from the conversation that we shared about. And make sure that you're you're subscribed. Well, there you have it, folks. Wrapped up the interview with Marty Bradley. Hope you found some insights and some takeaways that you could put into action. And as always, let us know in the comments if you found anything that stood out to you that you found most useful or that you'd like to see more interviews and topics that we discuss on in more detail. Just let us know in the comments and make sure you are subscribed to our channel with the notifications on so you know when we drop new interviews, new trainings, and new demos. And of course, make sure that you head on over to geniuniversity.com to subscribe to our newsletter and a wealth of additional information and resources to helping you with leveraging AI to get inside the mind of your markets and dominate your niche. All right, we'll see you in the next video.